Revelation chapter 2. Um, I've been dealing, I've been looking at uh, the hidden manna. We're still, we're still at, with the church at Pergamos. And like I said, there's so many things here that I want to be sure and cover. Um, the hidden manna, the, the white stone with a new name written on it. Uh, we, have, we have to look at that yet. And uh, then we'll be at the church in Thyatira probably after that. But uh, every time I think I'm about done, I think of something else. And I just, I like to cover the scriptures. I like to, I like to just take your time. My dad knew me pretty well. He knew that when he sent me out to mow the grass, I was going to put the lawn tractor in the fastest gear possible and get it done as fast as I could. And then when you turn around and look back, you see all this grass still sticking up everywhere that you missed. So he would always say, get back out there and finish it. So with the Bible, I don't like to race through it. I figure if the Lord's going to come, which he is, then he can be our teacher for all of eternity. While we're here, we have time to learn as much as we can about the word of God about why we believe what we believe. And I think that's important, especially now. You know that I've been here in the last few months, I've been really warning people about the Internet. When the Internet first came out, I thought, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Wow, the repository of knowledge. And what every false teacher, false prophet, false doctrine has figured out that they can gain a massive audience by using the internet. And I am just stunned at the number of YouTube video posters that say, in my opinion, some of the dumbest things I've ever heard of in my life and yet they're getting 300,000 views, half a million views, a million views. And then I read the comments and everybody's just going, wow, this is awesome. Wow, we never knew this. This is great. And it just, it blows me away. Um, here in the last few weeks, I've been dealing with, um, in the Watchman broadcast, the issue of the Catholic Mass and the Eucharist. What they teach, and we've, like I said, we've already had Catholic priests come to our radio station in Turkana and demand that I be taken off the air because I'm saying things against the Catholic Church. And I'm going to keep saying them because their doctrine is evil. It's not just that I disagree with them. Their doctrine is evil, is what it is. And um, so I, I want to, it's one thing for me to say their doctrine's evil. But then I think I have a responsibility to show you from the Bible why I say that and why I believe it. So I've recorded another watchman. It will be coming out today. And, and again, it's dealing with the Eucharist, the Catholic Mass, and what they believe about it. They believe that if you don't eat that, you cannot go to heaven. You just cannot and will not ever go to heaven if you don't eat what they offer you. And that is not the gospel. It's not anywhere close to the gospel. And I've said this for years. The gospel and salvation is never hinged or anchored to any earthly thing, ever. You don't need to be in a church building. You don't need to eat the communion wafer. You don't need all of these rituals that they say over people. What you need to do is believe that Jesus Christ came to die for your sins and God will save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I believe it's, I believe it's that simple. So, 
Um, he says, let's see, Revelation chapter 2, getting all worked up already. Verse 17, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And we were looking at that last Sunday, and I think a little bit the Sunday before last. We looked a little bit about manna, where it came from, what it was. We learned that it was actually angels' food. Angels do eat. Don't understand why, but they eat. God feeds them just like he feeds us. And uh, it rained manna. It looked like hoarfrost on the ground. Little coriander seed looking thing. And what did it taste like? Anybody remember? Honey. You got me right there. Amen. Tasted like honey. And believe it or not, the Israelites ended up hating it. And that's a, that's a picture right there. Because of their view of the, of the manna that God gave them, it showed their view of the words that God said to them. And they ended up despising not just the manna God sent, but they ended up despising his words that he said to them. And so in Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, turn there very quickly. You might recognize this verse. Jesus quoted it. He actually quoted it to who? Does anybody know? Let me read the verse. Deuteronomy 8, 3. He humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, because that's what the word manna means. What is this? It's what, it, what the word means. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone or bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. And Jesus quoted that verse. And who did he quote it to? Who did he say it to? Satan. When he was being tempted in the wilderness, 40 days he had gone without eating. And Satan thought he could, in, in Christ's weakness, he thought he could come up to him and tempt him to speak the word and turn stones to bread. Um... Who remembers the USA for Africa song back in the 80s? Who remembers that? We are the world. We are the children. You remember that? They got all these rock stars together. You remember what Willie Nelson's part was? Quincy Jones wrote the song. You remember what Willie Nelson sang? As God hath shown us by turning stones to bread. That was written and that's the lyric that was in the song. But did God turn stones to bread? No. Satan tempted Jesus, turn these stones to bread. And Jesus quoted this verse to Satan. Man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So he refused it. And it just goes to show you the corruption. When, when certain people get the word of God in their hands, they corrupt it. And I caught on to that when the song first come, come out and I, I watched the video and I heard the lyrics and I went, wait a minute, God didn't do that. That was Satan's temptation to Christ and Christ refused it and turned it down. Man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So let me ask you a question. Uh, well, we've covered it up with a veil, but on this table is written, this do in remembrance of me. Now, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a communion service. Okay? Does that bread that we eat, is it literally the body and the flesh, the meat of Jesus Christ? No. No, 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 no. It's not. That's what the Catholic Church teaches. And that's why they say, if you don't eat this, you cannot go to heaven. And their, their wafers are made in a factory, baked by nuns in some cases. And they have images of Christ on it, the crucifix, or some sort of, some sort of symbol on it. And they know that it's a wheat wafer 
when they bring it out in front of the church, but because the priest waves his hand in front of it and says words over it, they believe that it actually turns into the body of Christ, the flesh, the literal flesh of Jesus Christ. That's what they believe. That's what they teach. And they say, if you do not believe that, you are cursed, meaning you're going to go to hell. But that's not what Jesus was referring to. He was referring to the bread of his word. Can my flesh save me? Can I eat something in this world and it save my soul for eternity? No. My flesh has nothing to do with salvation. The flesh is already cursed. There's no helping it. So therefore, partaking of something in my flesh cannot save my soul. When I read the word of God and believe the word of God, that is my soul eating the bread of God. That's how it's done. Deuteronomy 8, 16, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. Now, remember, let's, let, this manna is going to represent God's word. And I'm going to preach another message this morning. I didn't, I didn't think I would be. But in dealing with the shield of faith, something caught me yesterday. And on the way over this morning, God's given me verses. God's given me things to add to it. But this, this Bible is literally our bread and God uses that to prove whether or not you're truly born again or not. How many people do you think go to church every week and never read their Bible? Lots of them. And all you have to do, it, when last... Last year, my wife and I took a vacation. We like to go to these Amish communities. Second largest Amish community in the country is up in Ohio. So we drove up there. Michaela went with us. And there was this Amish farm. They have like a petting zoo. They give you buggy rides and all this stuff. And so we got on the buggy and this, this Amish farmer is riding us around. And I strike up, I'm sitting next to him in the buggy. And I just strike up a conversation with him. He asked me about what I did for a living. I told him. And I probably in that conversation referenced at least four places out of the Bible. And he didn't know nothing from the Bible. Here's this man whose religion is how his beard is cut, how his suspenders are worn, and how much work he does. And does he conform to the rules of the Amish community in that area? And they're all different. But he knew nothing of some of the simplest things in the word of God. And he said, I've been Amish all my life. How is it that you can go to church all your life and not know what the word of God says? That's a shame. So that's what God is saying here. That he might humble thee. He said, I'm giving you the manna. To, to prove you. And at some point, Israel said, we're sick of this manna. We want flesh to eat. And God gave it to them. And they ate it until the Bible says it came out of their noses. They were vomiting it back up. They rejected God's word in the manna. They rejected his food, his bread from heaven. And that was a foreshadow of how Israel was going to treat God's word. So it's all about the bread that we eat is God's word. So when Jesus said, he that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna? He's referring to this book and things that are in this book that are, are awaiting you to discover them. If you ever get to the point 
where you think you know enough about God to get by. I'm telling you. Gary, is that, is that a good place to be? No, sir. Best place to be is, God, show me more. Show me more. I want to know. There are things in this book I have not even discovered yet. And I want to know them. So I want to keep eating this manna. And that's the proof. Now, turn to John chapter 6. There's a lot here, so open your Bible up. You can't read it on the screen. I do that on purpose sometimes. John chapter 6. And here's Jesus explaining to them about the manna. John 6, verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, verily means truly, I say unto you, you seek me, not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. In other words, this is, Jesus had done the miracle of taking the five loaves and two fishes and feeding 5,000 with it. And he said, verse 27, labor not for the meat which perisheth. And, what, and he's referring to the bread that we eat every day, the food that we eat every day. Now, everybody's got to work and everybody's got to eat. He's not telling us, don't go to work, don't earn a wage, and don't eat earthly food. He's not telling you that. That has to be. But if you want your soul to live forever in heaven... Labor for the meat and the bread that God gives you from his word. He said, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for, the meat, for, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God that ye, what? What's that next word? Believe on him whom he hath sent. That's the work. And it's not really work, is it? It's not like we have to come in and bow before the cross and cross ourselves and genuflect and eat the bread. I wouldn't try to eat this bread. It's not that we have to do that. It's not that we have to perfectly keep the law because there's no way we can. He's talking about believing, trusting what God said, trusting his word. Isaiah 53, who hath believed our report? And Isaiah 53 is all the things that happened to Jesus while he was on the cross, written about a thousand years before he went to the cross. He said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, what sign shewest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? See, the Jews always seeking a sign. They want miracles done, magic tricks, things that dazzle the eyes. Um, I haven't gotten this far yet in the Watchman broadcast, but I'll give you a preview. There was a, there's a woman from, I think she's from Korea, South Korea. And I think she's trying, I think she's pushing for sainthood. And I'm not sure that what's happening is real or not. But over 30 times, when she has gone to Mass, and the priest has laid that wheat wafer on her tongue... About a minute later, when they look, she has a piece of flesh in her mouth. Real flesh, meat. And they are believing that, that God is doing a miracle in this woman's life to prove to the good Catholics that that wafer really is the flesh of Christ. Now, I don't know if she's doing it by trickery. It can be done. It can be done real easy. But it's been filmed. There's been cases where they had a camera recording a mass where she was at, 
and all of a sudden, um, Eucharist wafers were falling down, just falling down on the floor from apparently nowhere. She has, uh, she is what's called a stigmatic. She's had nail holes appear on her hands. They filmed one time where she collapsed and they saw that the, her legs had been scarred by a lash. And I just think this woman's pushing for sainthood. Either that or the devil is doing a trick. It could go either way. Because what it's trying to do is trying to prove to these people that the Catholic Church is the real church. See these miracles? Wow, it must be the real thing. And Jesus said, a wicked and adulterous generation always seeks after a sign. They have to have a sign to make them believe it. Because it doesn't make sense. So that's what, he's, that's what he's getting at. What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Verse 31. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father gave you the true bread from heaven. What is the true bread? Jesus, the word of God. That's the true bread. So think of it like this. When the Israelites gathered the manna every day and they made cakes out of it or whatever they made out of it and ate it, did they get hungry after that? Yeah. Did they die after so many years of eating manna? Yeah, every one of them died in the wilderness. So that, that manna, because it was based solely upon the flesh, could not give them eternal life. It could not keep them alive. They ate the manna and they perished. What happens to food that we eat? Our body either converts it into energy or it stores it as fat to be used later or it's cast out into the chamber pot, the draft, the Bible calls it. And then it's gone and then you have to eat all over again. And according to the Catholic Church, you can't just receive the Eucharist one time and that's it. That's all you need for the rest of your life. You have to keep going back and going back and going back and going back. How many times do you get saved? Do we have to get saved again every time we sin? It's not possible, is it? Because then we're crucifying the Son of God afresh and putting Him to an open shame. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. And I, I think it's, I think, and I'm, I may preach this today if I remember it. Sometimes I think it's healthy to ask God again, God, am I saved? I think it's good because that shows that we don't have a pompous, arrogant attitude about it. We have a humble attitude about it. But anyway, so he said, verse 33, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of God life he that cometh to me shall never hunger and once you are saved if you are really are saved you won't go looking for some other religion to be a part of amen saved people don't turn to buddhism they don't need it they found what they were looking for. Um, verse 35, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. See what he said right here? Believeth, cometh to me and believeth. That's how we eat the bread of God. We believe his word. This is our manna. 
And I'm, I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, verse 36, But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Now, look up on the screen. And this is actually part of what I'm teaching in the Watchman broadcast. After the priest prays the Eucharistic blessing, he believes and he convinces the church people, the Roman Catholics, to believe that that, what he's holding in his hand, literally is Christ. They will have, you don't see it so much in America, but in Latin America, Central South America, Europe, other places, maybe, maybe in Africa, where Catholicism has a real big stronghold, they will have a Eucharistic adoration. They'll put the wafer in a big giant thing that looks like the sun called the monstrance, and they'll have a big parade. The, the priest will come out of the church with this Eucharist in this big display thing, and walk down the street, and everybody on the street bows down to what they've been told is Christ. They bow to it. They cross themselves. They reverence that. They think that that really is Christ, but it's not. And what did Jesus say in Matthew 24? If any man say unto you, lo, here is Christ, believe it not. He said, don't believe it. Now, verse 47, John chapter 6. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Did he say anything about eating the lunch of the Catholic Church? The bread and the wine. Did he say anything about that? No, he said, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat man in the wilderness and are dead. So he's telling us anything that our physical body eats, it doesn't matter what it is. You're still going to die. And you're going to need more of it to survive. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread, which, by the way, the word of God is the living word of God. For the word of God is quick. That means it's alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now, let's stop right here for a minute. And we have to use the whole of the scripture to understand what he was saying. Did God tell us in the Bible to not drink blood? Yes. It's in the law. He even said it back in Genesis 9 before Moses ever came along. Right as Noah was getting off the ark, God gave a few instructions for mankind's benefit. And God said, you shall eat no blood or any flesh with the blood still in it because the blood is the life thereof. So now, can Jesus change God's law? No. Can Jesus override God's law? No. So if God tells us to not consume any manner of blood he's not then talking about literally drinking blood from the veins of Jesus Christ he's not teaching us that what did what did Jesus say when he held the cup in his hand what did he say this is the new testament in my blood what's the new testament Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st, 2nd, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. That's the new, the new covenant. That's what he meant by that. Um, let's see here. Where, what verse was we on? 
If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. Verse 52, the Jews therefore, oh, we already read that. Verse 54, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. But it's meat and drink that your soul partakes of, not your physical flesh body. Verse 57, as the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this. So he's talking about something non-physical. This is that bread which came down from heaven. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things, verse 59, these things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this said, this is an hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, doth this offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? Did they see that? Yes. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, Jesus ascended up into heaven in a cloud. And he said, verse 63, it is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. There's your understanding. The flesh, you can eat all the Eucharist wafers. You can eat them 20 a day every day and die and go to hell. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. Then he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now do you understand it? The the flesh and blood of the living God is his word. Now I'm going to give you an example. Um, Luke 4, 4, Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Proverbs 30, verse 5, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Turn to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. And um, I know I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again um, in case, you know, some, maybe we have new families that are joining us now or whatever. If you, let's say you attend a family member's funeral, they're Catholic. Uh, or you're visiting family and they want you to go to church with them. And so you go to a Catholic church. Don't eat their mass. Don't do it. Acts chapter 15 is why. In Acts chapter 15, the apostles, the elders, the pastors, they got together to discuss whether they should keep the law or not, Gentiles. And they all agreed no. But they said four things we're going to ask the Gentiles to do. Number one, abstain from blood. Do not eat things strangled. And do not eat things sacrificed to idols. And the Catholic Eucharist is all three of those. They violate all three of those rules. Don't do it. Now, I may not totally understand why God said don't do it. But if God said don't do it, what do you do? You don't do it. Matthew 16, I want to finish with this so I can get done with it. He said in verse 6, Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because ye have bought no bread. Do ye not yet understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up? How is it that you... And what he's saying is, even, even if we forgot the bread, I'm still going to feed everybody. I'm Jesus. I can turn anything to bread. But so he says, how is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, but that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then they understood how that he bade them not be aware of the leaven of bread, 
but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So the bread of the Pharisees, Jesus said, was their doctrine, their teachings, their books, their commentaries on the law, the things that they added to God's word, which God told them, don't add anything to my word. So they added a whole bunch of books to God's word. And that's how the Jews lived. And Jesus said, don't eat their bread. But he wasn't referring to literal bread. He was referring to their teachings and their doctrine and their words. That's the bread. So there's bread you stay away from and bread you should eat. Amen? Father, teach us. I can't say it any better than I said it today. Father, it is up to you to show people what the true bread is, what the living bread is. I've read the scriptures. I can't explain it better than that. Give us understanding so that when we reason, not just with ourselves, but with other people who ask us questions like this, Father, we have an answer to give to our Catholic family members, our Catholic friends, our Catholic co-workers. Father, we're not trying to be mean to them. We're not going to be judgmental of them. We're not going to speak to them cruelly. We want to teach them the truth in love. But Father, put it in us first so that we know it. And we know what the real bread is. And we know what the blood is. And maybe correct the error of some sinner who thinks that because they went to the Catholic Church and ate the Mass that they're going to heaven. Father, maybe, maybe one of your people can rescue a soul this week from a devil's hell because they believed the leaven of the Church of Rome. Bless us today, feed us today, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said... Amen.